Okay, let's talk about the Zhou Dynasty. The Zhou Dynasty is in China. Who would have thought? And now if you notice, the Zhou Dynasty is getting a little bit bigger than the Shang Dynasty. And one thing you should also notice is that the Zhou Dynasty is still surrounding the Yellow River. And the Yellow River looks like that. Yes, it truly is yellow. And now the significance of the river is that, you know, all early civilizations settled around rivers because that's where they got the water for the crops and the crops to eat and, you know, you got to eat to survive. So uh, rivers are pretty important. The Zhou Dynasty ruled for a pretty long time, a, a little bit longer than the Shang Dynasty. Uh, they ruled from 1046 BC to 256 BC, and that is almost 800 years. One idea that came out of the Zhou Dynasty was this idea called the Mandate of Heaven. And this happened a lot in the ancient world. This is the idea where leaders claimed that they were the son of the gods. Okay? And the gods basically told them that they could rule. And uh, how this works is if uh, the leaders ruled the, the people well, then heaven allowed them to rule. But if they didn't rule the people well, then heaven would send all sorts of signs of displeasure, such as floods and earthquakes. Feudalism is another idea that came out of the Zhou Dynasty. And now, this is a system of uh, a relationship between landowners and their tenants. So here's how it worked. You got the king who ruled the entire empire, and that king gave land to his lords. Okay, and his lords would basically rule the land. The lords, in return, would send soldiers to the king uh, in order to uh, protect in case of any sort of attack. So the, uh, the soldiers, or vassals as they were known as, protected the land. These little guys down here, they were the peasants. Okay, they farmed the land. Okay, and how feudalism works is the peasants gave a small portion of their crops up to the Lord, and the Lords would give uh, some sort of payment to the King for being allowed to, to rule that land. So really, the King is uh, the one who's benefiting from this system. Okay, As they say, it is good to be King. Now, uh, the Zhou Dynasty is also known for a bunch of philosophers to come out of those 800 years of rule. Okay, one philosopher was a guy by the name of Lao Tzu, okay, and he was the founder of Taoism. And Taoists basically believe in achieving harmony with nature and being virtuous or good. Okay, another handsome man to come out of uh, this dynasty was Confucius. Okay, Confucius was the founder of Confucianism, and basically the goal of Confucianism was uh, a just and peaceful society. Okay, and basically, here's how it works. Society worked well when all people acted properly based on their roles and relationships with others. Another man to come out of uh, this dynasty was a man by uh, the name of Han Feza. Okay, And he actually lived a few hundred years after Confucius and Lao Tzu. Uh, this is towards the end of the Zhou dynasty. And he taught an idea called legalism. And legalism's ideas were based on the idea that people were selfish and needed to have strict laws placed upon them. Now, all good things must come to an end, and here's how the Zhou Dynasty ended. You see, you got all these states during the Zhou Dynasty. Okay? And these states don't get along, and they happen to fight with each other. Okay? This was called the Warring States Period. And like every fight, somebody's going to come out on top as the most powerful. And it just so happens that the winner was, drumroll please, thank you, this guy, uh, the Kingdom of Qin. Okay, so you'll learn more about him uh, in a couple days. And uh, that's it. Here are some sources. Thanks for watching.